This is Quetzalcoatlus northropii, standing so tall that it could have looked a giraffe in the eye. And with a wingspan of 10 to 11 metres, or 33 to 36 feet, it was probably the largest animal ever to fly. This is Tyrannosaurus rex, in my view, probably the most fearsome terrestrial predator of all time. And this is one of the silliest, most unlikely reconstructions of behaviour between extinct species that I've ever seen. If you would like to find out why I think so, keep watching. Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a real paleontologist, and you're watching Real Paleontology. And today, I'm going to do some reacting, which seems to be a bit of a thing on YouTube these days. I've seen various videos and podcasts where self-proclaimed average people film themselves reacting to stuff. And for some reason, lots of other people appear to like watching them react. For example, I've seen videos of average Americans filming themselves reacting to Australians playing a variety of football that we call rugby league. I've also seen Americans reacting to their supposed first encounter with the British humour. And I've seen average so-called everyday British people reacting to behaviours that Americans consider to be bad manners and vice versa. I could go on. Can't say that I personally find such things of much interest, but hey, each to their own. However, I have seen other videos where experts in a particular field do some reacting. And probably because I'm a nerdy old scientist, I find this kind of reacting to be far more interesting. And this includes paleontologists reacting to whether particular scenes in a movie or documentary are credible or just plain silly. So yesterday, when I saw this clip from Prehistoric Planet Series 2 pop up in my YouTube feed, I felt it was high time I did a bit of reacting of my own. This is because I reckon it's arguably the least likely interaction between two fossil species I've ever seen, and it just screams to be called out. Now, I can't show you the whole clip or Mr. YouTube will come down on me hard, but in a nutshell, and as narrated by David Attenborough, what happens here is that a T-Rex finds the carcass of a big marine reptile on a North American beach. The T-Rex chases a couple of little troodontids off, but is then itself chased from the prize by a pair of menacing Quetzalcoatlus. Wrong with this, you may ask. Well, it's not that these two species did not exist at the same time. Both inhabited North America in the late Cretaceous. And it's not because the animated reconstructions of either species are grossly inaccurate. Quite the reverse. The reconstructions are awesome. The problem is that there is just no way in the world that any T-Rex would have considered a pair of Quetzalcoatlus to represent even a mild threat. Frankly, this is a laughable proposition. So, let's break it down and make some comparisons. As any regular viewer of my little channel will know, for most predators, bite force is a pretty good indicator of prey size. By the same token, bite force is also a good indicator of which species will come out on top in any hostile interaction. And if you've watched my recent episode on the biggest biters of all time here, you'll know that with a bite reaching the equivalent of 57 metric tons or 126,000 pounds of force, T-Rex was probably the biggest biter to ever walk the earth. This is the kind of bite force that might enable a predator to pulverize very large bones and take down massive, heavily armored and formidable prey like Triceratops, for example. Now, we can't make a direct comparison here because there are no estimates for the bite force of Quetzalcoatlus. However, in 2021, Rodriguez and friends here calculated bite force predictions for a bunch of other pterosaurs, the largest of which was Thalassodromius. The maximum bite force they got for this animal, with a skull around one and a half metres long, was 247 newtons. 
Now, this was a pretty big pterosaur, but it was still only around a tenth the body mass of Quetzalcoatlus. But if we scale it up to the same size, then all else being equal, it would have had a bite force of around 1,180 newtons. This is around 40 times weaker than the bite of T. rex. In another recent look at pterosaur anatomy, in 2021, Kevin Padian and others concluded that Quetzalcoatlus specialised in taking small prey. They argued that with its long, narrow, toothless skull, that also lacked anything resembling a hooked beak-like structure, it would have struggled to even tear flesh away from a large dead animal, let alone kill it. On this basis alone, it seems very unlikely that Quetzalcoatlus would have descended to feed from the carcass of a giant marine reptile, even if the most powerful terrestrial predator of all time hadn't already laid claim to it. Padian and co. suggest that the big pterosaur's closest living analogues are to be found among living storks and herons, prowling swamps and meadows in search of fish or invertebrates to be swallowed whole. For me, these objections alone rule out the possibility that a couple of Quetzalcoatlus could have bullied a T-Rex off a meal. But there's another related factor at play here, size. Now, at first glance, the size difference between the big theropod and big pterosaur might not appear extreme. After all, standing at over five metres tall, Quetzalcoatlus would have looked down on T-Rex. And fully extended, its wingspan approached the total length of the mighty Tyrannosaur. But measurements like length or height are not the numbers that really matter when it comes down to contests between species, or within species for that matter. It's really all about the mass. There is a good reason why every martial arts code in the world has weight divisions, not height divisions. And the big pterosaur, like all flying vertebrates, is optimised for minimum weight. Most estimates put T. rex at between 5,000 and 8,000 kilograms, whereas most estimates put Quetzalcoatlus below 250 kilograms. And the most recent, by Pallion and Co., is around 150 kilograms. This puts T. rex at somewhere between 30 and 50 times heavier than the pterosaur. Put another way, this is around the same difference as between a red fox and a big male grizzly bear. The pterosaur is a waif. Putting Quetzalcoatlus up against T. rex would be like pinning Mike Tyson against the notoriously skinny 1960s supermodel Twiggy, or a bout between John Jones and Aussie screen legend Nicole Kidman. It's simply no contest, not even nearly. In fact, I honestly think that Nicole would stand a better chance of pushing John Jones off a giant marine reptile carcass than would Quetzalcoatlus of driving off a T-Rex. John Jones is only two or three times heavier than Nicole, not 30 or 50 times more. Anyway, it felt good to get that off my chest, quite cathartic. If anyone's got another silly paleo scene from a movie or documentary that they would like me to react to, please just let me know in the comments section. And if you did enjoy this episode, please like and subscribe. I'll be back with another episode shortly.